Allow non-root process to bind to port 80 and 443. Is it possible to tune a kernel parameter to allow a userland program to bind to port 80 and 443? The reason I ask is I think it's foolish to allow a privileged process to open a socket and listen. Anything that opens a socket and listens is high risk, and high risk applications should not be running as root. I'd much rather try to figure out what unprivileged process is listening on port 80 rather than trying to remove malware that burrowed in with root privileges. I'm not sure what the other answers and comments here are referring to. This is possible rather easily. There are two options, both which allow access to low numbered ports without having to elevate the process to root. Option 1, use cap underscore net underscore bind underscore service to grant low numbered port access to a process. With this you can grant permanent access to a specific binary to bind to low numbered ports via the set cap command. For more details on the e slash i slash p part, see cap underscore from underscore text. After doing this, slash path slash to slash binary will be able to bind to low numbered ports. Note that you must use set cap on the binary itself rather than a sim link. Option 2, use off bind to grant one time access, with finer user slash group slash port control. The offbind, man page, tool exists precisely for this. Install offbind using your favorite package manager. Configure it to grant access to the relevant ports, for example to allow 80 and 443 from all users and groups. Now execute your command via offbind, optionally specifying deep or other arguments, see the man page. For example, There are upsides and downsides to both of the above. Option 1 grants trust to the binary but provides no control over purport access. Option 2 grants trust to the user slash group and provides control over purport access but older versions supported only IPE4, since I originally wrote this, newer versions with IPE6 support were released. I have a rather different approach. I wanted to use port 80 for a node.js server. I was unable to do it since node.js was installed for a non-sudo user. I tried to use symlinks, but it didn't work for me. Then I got to know that I can forward connections from one port to another port. So I started the server on port 3000 and set up a port forward from port 80 to port 3000. This link provides the actual commands which can be used to do this. Here are the commands. localhost slash loopback sudo iptables tnat i output ptcpd 127.0.0.1 d port 80 j redirect to ports 3000 external sudo iptables tnat i pre routing ptcpd port 80 j redirect to ports 3000 i have used the second command and it worked for me so I think this is a middle ground for not allowing user process to access the lower ports directly, but giving them access using port forwarding. Dale Higland is spot on. So I'm just going to say the same thing but in a different way, with some specifics and examples, smiley face. The right thing to do in the Unix and Linux worlds is to have a small, simple, easily auditable program that runs as the super user and binds the listening socket. To have another small, simple, easily auditable 
program that drops privileges, spawned by the first program. To have the meat of the service, in a separate third program, run under a non-superuser account and chain loaded by the second program, expecting to simply inherit an open file descriptor for the socket. You have the wrong idea of where the high risk is. The high risk is in reading from the network and acting upon what is read not in the simple acts of opening a socket, binding it to a port, and calling listen. It's the part of a service that does the actual communication that is the high risk. The parts that open, bind, and listen, and even, to an extent, the part that accepts, are not the high risk and can be run under the aegis of the superuser. They don't use and act upon, with the exception of source IP addresses in the accept case data that are under the control of untrusted strangers over the network. There are many ways of doing this. Inept. As Dale Hegland says, the old network super server Inept does this. The account under which the service process is run is one of the columns in inept.conference. It doesn't separate the listening part and the dropping privileges part into two separate programs, small and easily auditable, but it does separate off the main service code into a separate program, exec ed in a service process that it spawns with an open file descriptor for the socket. The difficulty of auditing isn't that much of a problem, as one only has to audit the one program. In its major problem is not auditing so much but is rather that it doesn't provide simple fine-grained runtime service control, compared to more recent tools. UCSP TCP and Daemon tools. Daniel J. Bernstein's UCSP TCP and Daemon tools packages were designed to do this in conjunction. One can alternatively use Bruce Gunter's largely equivalent daemon tools on core toolset. The program to open the socket file descriptor and bind to the privileged local port is server from UCSB TCP. It does both the listen and the accept. The server then spawns either a service program that drops root privileges itself, because the protocol being served involves starting out as the superuser and then logging on, as is the case with, for example, an FTP or an SSH daemon, or Setagid which is a self-contained small and easily auditable program that solely drops privileges and then chain loads to the service program proper, no part of which thus ever runs with superuser privileges, as is the case with, say, Knail SNTPD. A service run script would thus be for example, this one for dummy edit for providing null ident service. Nosh. My Nosh package is designed to do this. It has a small set of JID utility, just like the others. One slight difference is that it's usable with systemd style listen underscore FDS services as well as with UCSB TCP services. So the traditional server program is replaced by two separate programs, TCP socket listen and TCP socket set. Again, single-purpose utilities spawn and chain load one another. One interesting quirk of the design is that one can drop superuser privileges after listen but before even accept. Here's a run script for Kmail SMTPD that indeed does exactly that. The programs that run under the aegis of the superuser are the small service agnostic chain loading tools GNU, Clearum, and Gear, Soft Limit, TCP Socket Listen, and Setagid. By the point that SH is started, the socket is open and bound to the SMTP port, and the process no longer has superuser privileges. S6, S6 Networking, and Exacline. Laurent Beko's S6 and S6 networking packages were designed to do this in conjunction. The commands are structurally very similar to those of Daemon Tools and UCSB TCP. Run scripts would be much the same, 
except for the substitution of S6 server for server and S6 setagit for setagit. However, one might also choose to make use of them. Beko's exocline toolset at the same time. Here's an example of an FTP service, lightly modified from Wayne Marshall's original, that uses Exocline, S6, S6 networking, and the FTP server program from public file. Ips. Garrett Popper's IPST is another toolset that runs along the same lines as UCSB TCP and S6 networking. The tools are CHPST and TCPSBD this time, but they do the same thing, and the high-risk code that does the reading, processing, and writing of things sent over the network by untrusted clients is still in a separate program. Here's in Popper's example of running FNORD in a run script. System D. System D, the new service supervision and init system that can be found in some Linux distributions, is intended to do what init can do. However, it doesn't use a suite of small self-contained programs. One has to audit System D in its entirety, unfortunately. With System D, one creates configuration files to define a socket that System D listens on, and a service that System D starts. The service unit file has settings that allow one a great deal of control over the service process, including what user it runs as. With that user set to be a non-super user, System D does all of the work of opening the socket, binding it to a port, and calling listen, and, if required, accept and process number one as the super user and the service process that it spawns runs without super-user privileges. Simplest solution, remove all privileged ports on Linux. Works on Ubuntu slash Debian. Works well for VirtualBox with non-root account. Now, be careful about security because all users can bind all ports.